I am 39 years old, and the Seattle Mariners have just done something that they have not done since I graduated high school. Plus, the owner of the Mariners has come down from on high to grace us commoners with his words, and a lot of them are pretty stupid. We'll get to all of it on today's Mariners Madness. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Sick Podcast. Mariner's Madness with Rob Guerrera. The pitch from Acevedo. A drive feet to right field. Down the line. The Mariners win this game 2-1. to one. The dream lives. They're going to the playoffs. The drought is over. The sickest Seattle Mariner's Podcast. It's going to be sick. What is good, everybody? Welcome to Mariner's Madness on the Sick Podcast Network. I am Rob Stats Guerrera here with you for another show. And as I said, your Seattle Mariners have done something that they have not done since 2003. And that is enter the month of June in first place. Yet that is where we are as we sit here on June 4th. Your Seattle Mariners, 34 and 27 Four and a half games up on the defending champion, Texas Rangers. Seven games up on the perennial thorn in the side, Houston Astros. It is a beautiful, beautiful place to be. And let me just say, because I've heard from a lot of other fan bases, I do not care that the Mariners would not be in first place in any other division in the American League. In fact, they wouldn't be in first place in any other division in the sport. Ask me if I care. Spoiler alert, I do not, okay? Okay. The Mariners came into the season in a division with the Astros and the defending champs. Nobody thought it was going to be an easy division then, right? Luck plays a factor in everything for every team. Yes, the Mariners are lucky to be in the American League West. I could care less, okay? I've seen one playoff berth since 2001. You shouldn't care. Who? Don't worry about what other teams are saying. First place is first place. Let's just enjoy it. And as I have said a million times on this show, the Mariners in the playoffs are a far more dangerous team than the Mariners in the regular season because of the tremendous pitching. As it stands right now, the Mariners' bullpen has thrown the fewest innings of any bullpen in baseball because the starters are so damn good. So they are, they could go into the playoffs if they make it. And again, we are a long way from that. But they could go into the playoffs with a bullpen that is relatively rested compared to every other team. We know the starters are really good. They could be far, far more dangerous in the playoffs than they are in the regular season. We'll get to some comments made by John Stanton to the Seattle Times. I thought some were, uh, frankly, just a load of crap. Uh, we'll get to all of those. But let's just, you know, take a snapshot here with the Mariners, see where they are, see what's coming up. Seven and three in their last 10 games. And what we're starting to see now is they are a much different team at home versus on the road. 21 and 11 at home, just 13 and 16 away from home. I think they hit better at home. The offense is just really not good on the road. Scott, it's not good anywhere, but it's really bad on the road. Scott Service talked about how they they know they have to get better at that. They made the coaching staff move, firing quote unquote offensive coordinator Brant Brown. <laughs> As I tweeted out, like, that's not going to fix anything. I know that they also have happened to score a bunch of runs in their past few games since that happened, but after it, therefore, because of it is a logical fallacy. Okay. Trust me. Brant Brown was not the problem with this offense. The problem with this offense is they got a bunch of guys that just aren't very good hitters. That's really the problem with this offense and a bunch of guys who are performing way under their career expectations. Jorge Polanco. I'm looking at you. Ty France, I know you've been better recently, but I'm looking at you. Mitch Hanniger, I'm absolutely looking at you. That's really the reason why they can't hit. It's it's always the players. It's never the coaches with baseball. In fact, I think you could make the argument coaches in baseball do less than coaches in any other sport, to be honest with you. I mean, your main job now as a coach in baseball is to take the information that your analytics team has discovered, researched, provided, and translate it and convey it to the players in a way that's meaningful and easy for them to understand. That's really your biggest job as a coach in baseball right now. And I don't disagree. Like, I think that should be, but it's not like they're like, Oh, see how your elbow is pointed up. If you just point your elbow down, that will unlock everything. No, no. In fact, I had a fan, a relative who for years 
was in the Mariners minor league system, got drafted by the Mariners, was in their minor league system. And they told me that they got literally no coaching, not like a little bit, zero coaching from the Mariners minor leagues. It's just, that's not really what the coaches are doing. I don't even know why the staffs are so big, frankly. I think it's ridiculous. So great. They fired Brant Brown. Is Do I expect the offense to be good now? Absolutely not. They're going to be who they always have been. The good news for the Mariners is they play a lot of games against really bad teams. They've got three coming up against Oakland. They've got four uh, in the series after that. After they go to Kansas City, they come back home. They play Chicago, who's awful. The White Sox, who maybe even might be selling off some of the players that they do have at that point. Then they got to play Texas and Cleveland. But there's a lot of Miamis on the schedule. Obviously, we know the Angels will be on the schedule more playing in the division. There's a lot of really bad teams, especially in the second half as we go down the stretch. I've talked about it a little before. Multiple series against the White Sox, the Mets, Tigers. It's just teams are bad. So that's obviously very good. Again, I don't care if they beat up on bad teams. Who cares? But I do think that we need to like get realistic about the offense. Like if they are producing at this level, despite playing so many bad teams, you really need to make a move. And hopefully they do, but just beat up on these teams that are on your schedule. Take those wins, bank them. And let's see what we do in October. That is where your thinking should be. If you are a Mariners fan now to that end, let's talk a little bit about what John Stanton told the Seattle times. Uh, I was surprised to see this. I'm always very attentive whenever you have an owner that speaks because, as my grandfather used to say, the fish stinks from the head, right? You want to talk to all the good things about the Mariners? You can talk about the owner, but you got to talk about all the bad things that come from the Mariners, and that starts with the owner, too. And he said a few things that I just, it's really hard to swallow as a fan few quotes I want to point out. First, early in the article, John Stanton, quote, we've got the resources to be able to do the things we need to do to put a good team on the field. Well, they're a good team now. They're in first place. So that's not really telling me anything. That's not really giving me confidence that you're going to make a move at the deadline to make this team better. And clearly there is no team that needs to make a move more than the Seattle Mariners. So that quote did not fill me with a lot of hope, let's say. Later in the article, and this is this was one of the quotes that I like just could not believe. He says, quote, I think we've got the ability to hit. John, you don't, okay? You just don't. You're second to last in runs per game. You're second to last in batting average. You're 24th in OPS, and you're dead last in strikeouts. You don't have the ability to hit. That is not subjective. That is not opinion. That is objective fact. You don't have the ability to hit. We're almost 40% of the way through the season. The team stinks at hitting. So the idea, well, well, we've got no. You say that when you're not willing to go all in to make a move, right? Because then you could say, well, I've always thought we had the ability to hit. You don't. The facts are the facts at this point. It's not early. It's not, oh, the weather needs to heat up. No, they're just not any good. So don't give me that crap. Now, he did go on to say, we will look at the trade deadline. I'll spend time with Jerry and Justin as we approach the deadline, and we'll talk about where we are. Dude, you know where you are. You know where you are. We know what the team is at this point. There is no like further discussion that needs to be had. What I really think he means by that is if they happen to win enough games to open up a big lead in the division, then we can use that as an excuse not to make a big move at the deadline, not to potentially spend any extra money because we can say, look how good we are. Look how far ahead we are. That's what I really think he means by that, which is, again, extremely frustrating because we know there's a difference in beating up on a bunch of bad teams and improving your record and being able to hang with the best teams. And we saw it against the Orioles. We saw it against the Yankees. I mean, it was a struggle to get a split at Yankee stadium. They lost two of three to Baltimore. The Mariners are good, but I don't think they're, they can play consistently enough right now at that level without making at least one move, maybe two, at least one, I would say. And the nice thing about that is 
at the deadline, as all these teams are going to be, you know, scrambling around to make moves to get players, the Mariners are not going to be in the biggest market. They're not going to have to compete in the biggest market. And of course, that's going to be for starting pitching. There's going to be a lot of teams looking for starting pitching. The Mariners don't have to worry about that. They don't have to do it. They're good with starting pitching. That is not a pool that they need to dip into. So that is great because it's going to be hard enough for the Mariners to make any moves to acquire players. The less competition they have for those moves, the better. So that's obviously good. I think they could bring in some bullpen arms, uh, especially because they've had some injuries there as well. Uh, I would not be shocked if they added a bullpen arm before the deadline. I don't think it's their number one priority. In fact, I know it's not their number one priority, but that's possible. But I think the market for that, there's going to be more really impactful bullpen arms available, I think, than impactful starting pitchers. And so it's going to be a lot harder for a team to get a starting pitcher. You're going to have to give up a lot more. And the Mariners are not going to be in that boat. Let's get to more from Stanton. He was talking about the money that the Mariners have quote unquote lost from the whole root sports thing. And like the article begins, despite what he says are substantial financial losses surrounding the uncertain future of root sports, Mariners managing partner, John Stanton said the front office will have his support to be active in the trade market this summer. Okay, great. Wow. Good job, John Stanton. But then when he was pressed about those supposed financial losses, he would not elaborate. He, quote, declined to provide specific figures of lost revenue. Now, if you were the Mariners, right, and you want to sell your fan base that we have cannot be spending money and generating a payroll like the best teams in the sport because of what happened with Comcast and, and because of how, you know, this quote unquote horrible raw deal, we got the rug pulled out from under us with the cable situation and all of that. Why wouldn't you give specific data to back it up so that people could see, look, we took this huge hit. You would totally quiet your fan base if that were the case, right? Let's just say for the sake of argument, like, hey, we took a $50 million hit, whatever it is. This is why we've had to make some of the moves. Unfortunate, but this is the reality. Some fans still wouldn't believe it, but a lot of fans would be like, damn, okay, I could see that. At least I can understand that, right? You you don't have money. You lose money. You can't go on that vacation, right? Those are the th circumstances change. Circumstances dictate action, and those can change. But the fact that you're not releasing the figures says to me that you didn't actually lose money. It says to me, and I think to a lot of fans, that you're just not making as much as you were. Your profits may have gotten smaller, but you haven't lost any money. And it's only a freaking billionaire that looks at a decrease in profits as lost money. And that's the problem. And it's not just Mariner's ownership, by the way, that looks at things like that. I think all businesses, all CEOs look at a decrease in profits as lost money. It is not the same thing. And the fact that you can sit here and say we've had substantial losses when in reality the team is at the top of the league in revenue and has been in revenue generated for a few years, that's why we're so upset as fans. That is the thing that absolutely drives us crazy because you're peeing on our leg and you're telling us it's raining and there is nothing that I can stand less than that when it comes in life. Yes. In sports, even more so because there's no stakes in sports, right? Like with politics and stuff, you're talking about people's lives, people's safety, people's financial well-being. There are real stakes there that affect people's lives. Sports is it's not, it's the toy department of life. And so the fact that they do it anyway, really does drive me crazy. And I saw a tweet from Connor Kelly responding to this whole article. And his comment was, with all due respect, Mr. Stanton, why should fans care about your expected financial revenue shortfalls when the Mariners have consistently been reported as near the top of the league in operating income? If you dispute these reports, can you show us the documents that disprove it? And that's the thing. If you want to dispute the reports about the Mariners revenue, don't ask us to take your word for it right? Don't ask us to just trust you because you've eroded the trust with this fan base. That is 
it's just not there anymore. And the fact that you have no hard proof and you're just asking us to trust you is proof that you are full of shit. And I'm sorry to curse, but it is the fact. That is just the reality of the situation. And as Colin O'Keefe, our friend, friend of the show, Colin O'Keefe has said, if you were looking for a tone shift from Stanton and talk with some heft and intent behind it, instead of the usual platitudes, you will not find it here. Stanton also said um, that the broadcast of future is kind of up in the air. They'll probably keep it as it is now, but he did say all options were on the table. Uh, that is a big deal. I do think the Mariners need to straighten that out and, and fix it and get some stability there. Obviously I know major league baseball is trying to kind of take over and could have a bunch of teams whose games that they put out there. Um, who knows? That's definitely something the Mariners need to explore. And to be honest, usually with the Mariners, that's the stuff they take care of because the baseball is not the first priority with this team. But I honestly think that they did not expect this. They got caught with their pants down. Whether they should have expected it is a different argument. But I think it's pretty clear right now they didn't expect it and they don't know what to do. And that's going to be a big deal going forward. If, we, if the Mariners are ever going to spend like we want them to spend, this broadcast situation is going to be a huge, huge factor in determining whether or not that ever actually happens. Will it ever actually happen? I don't know. But when you you sit here now and the Mariners have got a payroll, a payroll excuse me, of around $140 million, and you see the Astros in the same division who have just camped out in the American League Championship Series for the past half decade, their payroll is $240 million, $100 million more than Seattle. When you have Texas at around $225 million, when you have teams that the Mariners are competing with, even the Angels, who the Mariners are better than, have $172 million payroll. The Yankees, of course, up over three hundred. million. That's the depressing part. You don't even have to spend at the top of the league. I don't even think Mariners fans are asking you to spend near the top of the league. You could spend 50 more million dollars and not be anywhere close to the top of the league in payroll. Think about that. 50 more million dollars. You know how many good players you could bring in for 50 more million dollars? And you still wouldn't be anywhere close. So that's the thing. We're not even asking the Mariners to spend another 150 million and put them up around that 300 million dollar mark which is where the real contenders live how about you get to 200 million right or 210 million just a little effort that's all we want just just give us a little more just pretend to be a real club and look maybe they will we don't know they could make a move. They did go get Luis Castillo and paid Luis Castillo. And to be fair, he is making me look like an absolute idiot because my God, has he turned it around recently? You know, after his first couple starts this year, he has been absolutely on fire and they went out and got him. They paid the prospects and they paid the money. And that's what good teams should do. And Stanton did say he'd be open to signing some of the Mariners, good players to deals kind of like the Julio Rodriguez deal. I don't think you're going to get these pitchers to sign those type of deals. I really don't. Because I think that the agents for these pitchers know they're going to get way, their deals will be way less complicated and way less just, I don't even know what the word contingent, I guess, on what happens than the deal that Julio signed. You can't even explain Julio Rodriguez's contract in one sentence. It's that complicated. I think the agents for these pitchers know we're young. We're going to hit the market. Everybody needs the services that we are offering. And so we're not going to agree to some crazy deal like Julio Rodriguez. We're not doing that. I'd love it if they did, to be honest with you. I would love it. I'd love to see George Kirby and Logan Gilbert, uh, Logan Gilbert and those guys locked up long term. I don't think they're going to do it. Stanton says he's open to it. The reason they did the Julio Rodriguez contract is because it works to the Mariners' advantage. Clearly. Teams don't do contracts unless they think it works to their advantage. So we'll see if it happens. There are going to be guys at the deadline that are available, though, right? Vlad Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette is going to be available. Pete Alonzo, even a guy like Lamont Wade Jr. in, in San Francisco. He's got a 470 on base percentage, can play first base, can play the outfield. Yes, please. I would love to have somebody like that on the team. And if you got to move Ty France, great. Or J.P. Crawford, 
I don't think the Mariners would ever move J.P. Crawford because there's there's more there with the clubhouse situation that I think maybe they'd be cognizant of. I would be willing to do it. To get a, a good player, and even in a down year, I think Bo Bichette is better than J.P. Crawford. I would do it. I don't know that the Mariners will, but they should. You know, I keep seeing all these Mariners prospects. Their, their minor leagues are so stocked. Being number one on the list of like minor league strength and team strength is worth nothing. It's not, it's not worth anything. You can't hold on to all those guys. They never all develop, right? Remember when it was supposed to be Kyle Lewis, Julio Rodriguez, and Jared Kelnick, right? That was going to be the Mariners outfield. All these young prospects, they were going to be so good. And what happened? Kyle Lewis was good. And unfortunately, his career just got derailed by injury, but he was the rookie of the year. He was, I mean, when he played, he was excellent. Jared Kelnick stinks. Julio Rodriguez is talented, not consistent yet, but obviously he's an everyday player. No question about it. But my point is like, even in, it is so rare to have a situation like the Yankees did in the nineties, right? Where you have the the core, you have Posada and Jeter and Pettit and Rivera and all, and Bernie Williams, right? That's so rare. And that's why they won all those damn championships. Cause yeah, if you have a bunch of young players that all develop at the same time and end up being really good players, of course, you're going to be really good. But statistically speaking, that doesn't happen that often. And so you more likely than not end up in a situation like the Mariners are in now. Kyle Lewis didn't work out. He's gone. Jared Kalnick didn't work out. He's gone. And the player that that did, quote unquote, work out for is certainly has a high ceiling and is capable of greatness, but isn't consistently good right now. So that's why I'm not one to hoard all these prospects or anything like that. No, 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 no. There's two way prospects make your team better. One is by coming up, developing and playing for you. And the other is being moved for proven commodities. And the Mariners are in a situation right now where proven commodities mean way more than hope for the future. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. Hope is not a strategy. It never will be. And I know the Mariners like it because if they do work out, those players are super cheap. They're cost controlled for a very long time. And that's really the only thing the Mariners care about. But they got to be moved. There is no single prospect that the Mariners have that I would not move to get a proven player at this deadline. Not a one. In fact, I would trade two or three of them. I would trade all of them. <laughs> Let's be honest. That's where I am. That's my level of frustration. You know, I was just looking. I don't know how I got down this rabbit hole, but I did. I was looking back at the ALCS in 2001 against the Yankees. And it is the single game four of the ALCS that year in 2001 is the single most painful sports memory of my life. And I've seen since then, I've seen my team lose multiple Super Bowls, including the 49ers last year in overtime against the Chiefs. It was still not as painful as watching Alfonso Soriano hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth inning in game four in the 2001 ALCS off Arthur freaking Rhodes and watching that ball go over the fence right by that yellow staircase that used to be in the old Yankee Stadium. That is the most painful memory of my life. And that is as close as my Seattle Mariners have ever gotten to appearing in a World Series. So I need to erase that memory. I need to just take the edge off of that. So if you got to trade any of them, Harry Ford, whoever you want to name, I don't care. All of them. Do it. Do it this year. Now is the time. And don't wait till July either. I know some teams are, well, I don't know. We want to wait. Please. The Mets, they know they're out of it. The Blue Jays, I think you can convince them to move some of their players to move a Vlad Guerrero Jr. I would love Vlad Guerrero Jr. Yes, please, Vlad Guerrero Jr. He could play first. He could play third, give you a little flexibility. Yes, go and do it. I don't know if they will. In the meantime, we can all sit here and we can all hope that, you know, J.P. Crawford will pick it up a little bit. Ty France has started to pick it up, to be fair to him. Uh, a little bit recently, he started to pick it up, which is which is nice. But Jorge Polanco, Mitch Hanniger, Julio still needs to pick it up in the power department. We could sit and hope that that happens. But again, that's not enough. You can, you can make moves while you hope, right? Like that's a real thing that you can do. 
And I think honestly, I think I think Julio will pick it up. Um, I don't know that Jorge Polanco is going to pick it up and get back to his career numbers, to be honest with you, between injuries and, you know, because it's one thing to just hope that he can play and get back to where he was. But when you're hurt as often as he is hurt, it's really hard to get going. This whole like kind of start stop thing. It's hard to get into a rhythm. It's hard to get comfortable. So that may just continue the whole year. Same thing with Mitch Hanniger. Same thing with Mitch Garver. Like it's a tall task. You're uh, the first part of getting back to your career numbers is staying healthy and being available for an extended period of time. And that may never happen with those guys. So again, you can't just sit there and say, well, they should be better because look at their career numbers. It's like, yeah, they should. You're right. But the reality of the situation tells a different story. And so I think that's where the Mariners are. And how good would you look, right? If you're John Stanton, if you're Jerry Depoto, you make moves at the deadline. And you bring in proven players, and this team just goes to the moon and takes off and makes a deep playoff run. Like, you are legendary in this city. Legendary. Because you're competing with no one. The playoff successes in the history of the Mariners are 1995, when they were down 2-0 to the Yankees, and they came back in the ALDS. And, like, what? The making the playoffs and ending the drought a couple of years ago, beating the Blue Jays in the first round of those playoffs. That's it. That is it. There is no playoff history with this franchise. So you have the chance to do something that has never been done in the history of the franchise if you're John Stanton and Jerry Depoto and all those guys. And I like they can sit there and say, like, we don't, that doesn't matter. We don't care. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew in a city, wherever you went, you were going to be beloved for the rest of your life? That's pretty cool, right? That is a pretty cool thing. They have the opportunity to do it. And again, I keep saying Seattle is a monster sports town. I don't know if they're going to do it. I really hope they do. Anyway, uh, coming up on Thursday this week, we'll get into a little more of the on the field stuff, a little more of the you know actual baseball talk. This was kind of a bigger picture show just because of John Stanton and where they are with the trade deadline and the firing of Brant Brown. Um, but we'll get into more of the nitty gritty stuff on Thursday. We're here every Tuesday and every Thursday for you on the Mariners Madness podcast. I am on all the socials at stats on fire. Hit me up. I love to talk baseball. If you disagree, that's even better. Hit me up, leave a rating and a review on Apple pods. I promise I will read it on the show. Enjoy the Mariners. Hopefully the winning continues and we'll talk to you on Thursday. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Mariners Madness with Rob Guerrera on YouTube, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.